Now, some of you watched this video that I posted um, that's gotten relatively famous of late where Matt, not Matt Dillahunty, I'm about to say Matt Dillahunty breaks down talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. No, Jordan Peterson breaks down starting to talk about Jesus. And, you know, I posted it up there. It's a few videos back. Go check it out if you, if you, before you watch this, listen to this video. And he starts talking about a synchronicity experience where the symbolic where the subjective and the objective meet in actual fact. Now, that's something I've talked about a lot in my videos prior. About a year and a half ago, I was on the subject all the time. Where the symbolic world, where the subjective and the objective meet in actual fact. There's plenty of places where that happens in the real material world and everybody knows or understands that it's actually occurring. So, for example, money has symbolic significance but it is in fact a fiction. It is a convenient fiction that we all tacitly agree to as a society and a culture, but it's a fiction. Money, apart from our story about money, <laughs> there's a story we tell about money, and it isn't really real. There's no actual tangible value to money. It's a convenient fiction that we all agree on. By virtue of the fact that we all agree on it, it has actual quantifiable, tangible power objectively verifiable reality, we can count it, we can, you know, if you don't believe that, send me yours. <laughs> I don't believe that, Craig, it's a fiction. Now, once upon a time, uh, you can go watch these videos, they're fun to watch, I used to get a kick out of them. Uh, a bank note, money started out as a promissory note. Money had a, a origin. You know, you go to a bank, a bank had deposits of gold, and a promissory note was like money actually did represent something tangible in the real world. It re represented one piece of gold. And it sort of did that up until, I think it was 1968. I forget the exact year, but I'm pretty sure it was Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard. So since then, money has been an abstraction. There's no tangible real world value to the money at all outside of what we collectively agree upon. You understand that, right? But by virtue of the fact that we all agree upon it, this symbolism, it has real tangible assets. So the subjective and the objective meet in actual fact. I didn't say that all that clearly, but you understand the point. Let me give you another example I've talked about in uh, times past. Because this, this, is, this is a way of understanding. Okay, And I, I'm trying to say this as clearly as possible to put your brain in the right frame of reference to have the rest of the conversation. If you went to a garage sale and you bought a guitar and you bought it for like a hundred bucks, so that's a cool looking guitar. Then you later found out and could prove it, you had the progeny to prove it, that it was owned by Elvis Presley, you would, your head would explode, you'd freak out, you'd be so excited. Why? Because it's now worth, in actual fact, objectively speaking, thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars if you could prove it was owned by Elvis Presley. Now here's the interesting thing, that's an actual fact. The tangible real world value of that guitar has gone up exponentially. And you could sell it for a lot of money. What has changed about it materially? Zero. Nothing. Nothing. We all understand and we all intuit that something profound and meaningful has changed about it to the point where people would be willing to pay a lot of money for it. But what has changed about it material, exact, materially speaking, exactly to zero. So on the one end of the spectrum, you have people who would you know, all different variations of what people would believe about what that means. On the one hand, you'd have the New Age kook um, who would hang the guitar on his wall and ascribe all this talismanic or voodoo power to it. They can now, I've got the Elvis guitar on my wall, I can write songs and play guitar. There are people who would literally believe that, right? But on the other hand, you'd have the more fundamentalist, either Christian or atheist, <laughs> take your pick, the literalist, the logical positivist, this would be leaning closer to the fundamentalist atheist. And there's probably some atheists listening to me who would go, well, you know, nothing has changed about the guitar at all. In strictly literal terms, and they'd be completely just not understanding. Because nothing has changed about the guitar from a material point of view. If you distill the guitar down to its material essence, nothing has changed at all. But something in real world tangible asset value quality about it, a quality about it, has changed exponentially. So that the subjective, and the key word I used was quality, qualia, something about it has mysteriously changed forever and for all time. And the only way you could tangibly describe it is either spiritually, metaphorically, or symbolically. Nothing has changed about the guitar materially. 
Everybody understands that. The logical positivists would argue against it even changing spiritually and material at all. They'd be technically right, maybe, but it'd be a stupid thing to do. Why? Because they'd miss, they can make that, it's not worth thousands of dollars. Nothing has actually changed about the guitar. Look, I perform an experience on the wood and the, the wood is the same, and they'd be technically right, but they'd be totally missing the boat. Or maybe technically right. I don't know, given all the experiments of the quantum realm, they'd probably be wrong. But, but according to them, they'd be technically right, but missing the whole point. Incapable of thinking symbolically or spiritually, as many atheists are. Did you hear me? Many atheists are unwilling, usually, not incapable, unwilling to think symbolically, spiritually, metaphorically, because nothing about the guitar will have changed materially at all. But yet everything about it is totally different. Its value, the real world significance of that, that guitar has grown exponentially. And it can make you rich if you apply it correctly. If, you, if, you, if you're smart about that guitar from that point forward, you are rich and you, you struck gold. So, we all understand this right now. Let's go back to the Jordan Peterson conversation. Because he started talking about where the symbolic and the world, the symbolic and the metaphorical and the narrative meet and the object of world meet in actual fact. Now, what was interesting is then you can go watch Rationality Rules' interpretation. Because up until eight minutes in, it was actually pretty cool and pretty interesting and pretty honest. He starts talking about, he's had experiences like that in his real life. He starts talking about experiences in his actual life where something has told him, slow down. Take your foot off the gas, you're driving too fast, and it saved his life. Now, Christian obviously would say that's the voice of God, and he rationalizes it as the voice of his subconscious. I'm not arguing that it's not the voice of his subconscious. All I'm trying to say is look very closely at that, because something told him to slow down, and he slowed down, and it helped protect him and save his life. Now, could that be the voice of God? Maybe. It definitely was the voice of his subconscious. We both agree about that. But what he's starting to do is do what, what the Christians do, or what I did prior to me becoming a Christian. And this is the only thing I'm telling you to do if you're an atheist. You don't have to decide that that voice telling him to slow down was, you know, God manifest, God working in him, the hope of glory. I'm not asking you to do that. That's a little bit more than you can, that's a little bit, I, I understand that would be a big hill for you to climb. But notice that the subconscious mind, okay, because this goes back to things I'm talking about experientially in my religious experiences videos all the freaking time. There are places in the real world where the subject and the object of meet, and we all agree, as objective fact, it's an objectively verifiable fact that it was better off slowing down and listening to that voice, right? And the thing that he is talking about isn't totally disassociated from Christianity, because in Christianity we talk about the still small voice. Now, you can know that that's the voice of his subconscious and use prayer to just get better. I've talked about this in some of my videos a lot. Just use prayer as a tool. As a tool to what? To get better at hearing and perceiving that absolutely recognizable voice of your subconscious that we all agree is there. An empirically verifiable voice is actually there. Something, in fact, told him to slow down. Yes, it was probably a subconscious mind, but you can use prayer, you can use prayer as I am talking about it, to get better at perceiving, better at hearing from, better at understanding and acting more in accordance with that inner voice. Christianity, we call it the still, small voice. Now, interesting fact about reality, and this is a fact. When, when, when the Christian scripture says, do not put the Lord your God to the foolish test, First of all, fact number one, atheists routinely misinterpret that on purpose. Putting the Lord your God to a foolish test is not, you know, trying to find, I, I don't even know, I don't, but the both two, two, two people misinterpret that routinely. And this should give you pause if you're an atheist, because I promise you this, this, this problem is epidemic in the atheist community. The literalist Christian, the most fundamentalist type of Christian, and the fundamentalist atheist, both routinely routinely, almost always, misappropriate and misinterpret scriptures on purpose. 
interpreted in the least parsimonious, least obvious way because they literalize it. With the, with the literalist Christian, they're doing it at least with integrity. The atheists are doing it, you know, they're being obtuse on purpose. They are absolutely steadfastly refusing to think symbolically, metaphorically, spiritually on purpose. They're perfectly capable of interpreting the world that way. They're just refusing to. They're just refusing to. Because you've had those experiences. Pay attention to them. Pay attention to them. Rationality rules is at least starting to pay attention and get honest. I had this experience and telling you the truth. I had this experience where my subconscious was telling me to slow down. That's the only thing I'm ever asking an atheist to do. Have those experiences and notice them when they happen. And stop automatically discrediting them and writing them off and rationalizing them out of existence. You'd be better served by it. First of all, your subconscious, objectively speaking, is trying to protect you. It's trying to keep you safe. If it's just an intuitive voice that nature gave to you, then you're still way better served by getting way deeper in touch with it. Why? Because it knows more than you, the conscious agent, know. It is smarter and better than you. It knows more than you and it will keep you safe. It knew to keep him safe. Your brain is like a supercomputer. I've explained this many, many, many times. And it perceives and parses out reality better than you, the conscious agent, does. And it remembers things that you, the conscious agent, do not re remember. And it notices things that you, the conscious agent... This is a scientific fact, by the way. They've done many studies that have confirmed this thousands of times. It is entirely possible to perceive something and, and, and not notice that you did. You have to re-represent it back to yourself. You have to be meta, uh, what, the, what are they called? Metacognizant of it in order to know you perceived it. Think about you right now breathing. Did you know, were you breathing for the last hour? <laughs> you were, or weren't you? Were you paying attention to it? No. It's, possibly, it's possible to be participating in perceptive activity as the Rationality Rules video clearly demonstrates. He says, I probably observed a car slow down, and it communicated something in my brain that I, the conscious agent, didn't pick up on. Okay, that's where spirituality and religion is born. That voice. That's where spirituality and religion is born. That voice. You don't have to believe in the great man in the sky to start paying more attention to that voice. Ask Sam Harris. Go read his book, whatever it's called, Self-Transcendence, Woo and You by Sam Harris. I don't remember what it's called. Self-Transcendence, The Woo Factor, and I, Sam Harris, am no longer... I'm fundamentalist atheist, now I'm Deepak Chopra. I don't know, I don't remember what it's called. But it's pretty good, I read it. She's Buddhist, he starts doing... Buddhism is a perfect example, okay? Buddhism can get you really in touch with that inner voice and you don't need to believe in my sky fair in order to start understanding that you can use, you can use spiritual tools to be much better at perceiving reality as it actually unfolds and occurs. Consequently protecting yourself. Getting to the point where I said, putting the Lord your God to a fool's test. Nobody but nobody but nobody who is listening to me right now, even if you didn't know you heard that inner voice, you obeyed it and respected it. Why? Because nobody ever does put the Lord their God to the fool's test and live to tell the tale. What it means is, I, ha I almost did it areas of my life. In other words, once you start paying attention to that voice, the universe itself, as the New Agers would say, starts communicating with you, bro. Starts commu you start having synchronicity experiences like that. That's why so many people believe in God, even though they're not part of an individual religious tradition, by the way. So the experience breaks down like this, okay? And this is a way that atheists even have had these experiences all the time. They just look back at them from a distance of five years and rationalize it away. May not be the voice of God. But you should still be paying attention to those experiences too on a deep and meaningful level. Why? Because they're really important and they're trying to communicate to you. You don't have to actively believe that that was God working through somebody to listen, to pay attention, to care deeply what is in your best interest to care deeply about. Do you understand? That inner voice is something that is located in almost every religious under tra tradition under the sun. And it is something that is provably and tangibly there, according to science. That which experiences the world is there inside of you. There are different ways of trying to locate it in spiritual and religious traditions, but it's actually there even according to an atheist. He's driving in a car and something tells him to slow down. Does that mean God told him to slow down? No, not necessarily. It's subconscious, but you can pay more attention to that voice. 
and then you are starting to align yourself, these spiritual ideas start to make more sense to you rather than less sense to you. Do you understand now what I mean? So the synchronicity experience goes like this. Then you have an experience what Jordan Peterson has. And in Christianese, we would say God's breaking him. <laughs> God broke him. <laughs> He's, that's God talking to him. Yeah, God, God broke it, breaking through. You start to pay attention to those experiences. You'll have them all the time. You'll have them to the point where they will freak you right the F out. I swear to God on everything holy, that's the truth. I swear to God. So it goes down something like this, a synchronicity experience. And every one of you has already had them. Every one of you has already had them, and you've already probably had them to the manifold thousands. And you probably didn't notice yourself having them, but very few people have them and don't do what the things tell you to do. They don't. Very few people do. Because that would be really self-destructive and stupid. If you're crossing a street and something tells you stop walking, almost everybody stops walking. And then the car drives by. And you don't get hit. You stay safe when you heed that voice. You stay safe when you heed that voice. Imagine if rationality rules tried to rationalize himself right then in the moment. Oh, I, should, I shouldn't slow down. I, 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 I can't really be perceiving anything. <laughs> he would have gotten killed. Very few people disregard that voice. What they do do do, and almost every atheist would fall into this camp, is don't notice they noticed it. Don't notice that it was there and they paid attention to it and it kept them safe. They don't notice it. Most spiritual traditions are a way of trying to tune into that voice, trying to hear more clearly from it. You want to just think of it as your true self, as they would say in Hinduism, your Christ self, as we would say in Christianity, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. You're tuning into the voice of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. But there's an actual tangible there, there, according to the science, according to depth psychology. Okay, they're doing experiments on that stuff all the time. So the synchronicity experience, one more time, right? Yeah, I keep, I keep saying I'm going to start the synchronicity and never, never explain it. So how it works is something like this. And all of you have probably had an experience like this. The only question is, did you notice when it happened? So you're thinking, should I go to law school? Should I go to law school? Guys like, you know, I really, really, I don't know about law school. You know, my parents want me to be a doctor. I guess my parents would probably want me to go to law school. Okay, my parents want me to go to law school. I don't know about this law school thing. Is it for me? So he's agonizing over whether he should go to law school. He says, you know what? I'm getting sick of thinking about it. I'm going to go, go to the library. At the library, lo and behold, some really good friend of his he hasn't seen in eight years. Hey, Joey, where you been? Oh, you know, i got something to tell you. I, I became a lawyer. Wait, what? I went to law school, and it was the best decision of my life. Now, it's not quite that black and white when you have a synchronicity experience, but experiences like that happen to people all the freaking time, where because you are thinking of your life narratively, this is what Peterson was trying to talk about, as a narrative, as a story, and that's how most of us think of our life, as a story, a narrative we tell ourselves, even atheists, even atheists, it's a story, especially the deconversion, the deconverted atheists, it's a story, and then I deconvert, and hallelujah, I'm Mr. Rational, and I think clearly all the time. Okay, okay, it's a story you tell yourself. Yeah, it's crap all the sure, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I swear to God, that's the story that they tell themselves. I swear to God, that's the story you tell yourself, I promise. Anyways, so what he is doing it's as if, now I'm not saying in that particular situation the universe was saying, dude, go to law school. But that's how most people would perceive that. And everybody under the sun has experiences like that, and very few people actually walk away from or discount them in real time. You may discount that it was God or that it's the actual universe communicating to you, but very, very few people and no wise person worth their salt. Some people might walk away. And go, that, I, I have to, you know, let me rationally think about that. But nobody who would ever be called wise would ever disregard a message like that completely. Nobody. That person would not be someone you should listen to. Why? Because they'd be an idiot. That's not wise. That's just plain stupid. Just like if, if rationality rules had decided to not slow down when, the, when his subconscious or the voice told him to slow down, that'd be a stupid freaking thing to do. That would be just plain stupid. Now, all I'm telling you to do if you're an atheist listening to me, ultimately this is between you and whatever. I don't care one iota what you believe. I don't even know who's listening. Pay attention. 
be like rationality rules. Start listening. You said, once upon a time you sought for God. Well, I say, the, that's, what, that's what the good book says. Seek and you will find. That's the beginning of seeking. And you will find. Is starting to pay attention. Do some meditation practice. There don't have to be Christian meditation. You know, do something that try to get you more in touch with that inner voice. Have some more respect for spiritual traditions from time immemorial. Because they have been positing since the beginning of time that that is a way of interpreting reality. And it's a really powerful, symbolic way of interpreting reality. And, you know, let me see if I'm... Rambling a little, I know. You're rambling a lot, Craig. All right, fine. <laughs> 20 minutes. Right, you're rambling a lot, Craig. All right, fine. It's early in the morning. I don't know what you want from me. This is a YouTube video, you know, ultimately. That still small voice is something that Christianity talks about. It's something that I experienced directly before I became a Christian. There were experiences in life where the where you e, 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 there in the Old Testament that atheists always try to literalize, so they refuse to understand it as it's written, which is symbolically and spiritually. There's the the writing on the wall. That's something that has entered into the consciousness of the sociological di di dialogue, the consciousness of the entire country or whatever. The sociocultural, <laughs> it's entered, in, what, what am I trying to say? It's entered into the sociocultural dialogue. The writing on the wall. You've heard of that expression, right? Directly out of the Old Testament. Very, 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 you learn to read the writing on the wall means you learn to read the signs. You heed what is trying to be told to you. Should I marry that guy? Should I marry that guy? And then all of a sudden you're hanging out with your friend and they're like, you know, that guy's a douchebag. Out of nowhere. Apropos of nothing. That guy that you're, he, let me tell you why he's awful. The universe itself is trying to communicate to you. He decides. Once you start seeing your life in narrative terms like that, you have experiences that the Christian would call spiritual. There's no reason on earth to disregard them. To disregard them is stupid. Stupid. Just plain stupid promise. You're not Mr. Science, Mr. Rationality. You're Mr. I don't understand how the world works and I don't care what's true. And, you know, I'd rather rationalize everything away. Because if you're some friend and you're deciding whether you should marry some clown and you're sitting down with your best friend and they start telling you information about that guy and you just shut your mind to it, that's not Mr. Science and Rationality. That's, hmm... I should really think about, I should, I should, this should really give me pause. That happens all the time in life. And uh, it happens to atheists too. And from my, my listening to atheists, it happens to them and they just don't connect the dots. They refuse to think of the world in, you know, I'm not saying that you have to think of it as God speaking versus it's not God, it's not black and white, you know, ontological realism ontological naturalism, black and white reality is the only thing, or it's God speaking. There's an in-between place that most people reside and most people are really comfortable with to one degree or another. I'm not saying, you know, become Deepak Chopra and start channeling your inner voice while, you know, start divining while you're walking around. Well, because it's out there. It's a little bit, it's a little bit kooky. That's why people call them woo artists because it seems to be woo-woo. But stop disregarding it altogether. Especially when you don't. That's the point. Rationality rules only notice something that actually happened to him. He didn't make up that it did or did not happen to him. He just paid attention to it. Yes, it is the voice of your subconscious. We both agree on that. All I'm telling you to do is start paying attention to that voice more and more frequently. It will serve you in good stead. You know, don't disregard spiritual experiences. Don't disregard different types of, of connecting to that type of perceiving the world. Why? It's a valuable way to perceive reality. That's why. So, I think that was all clear and made sense. It was a, yeah, I was a little rambly. I know. It's early in the morning. What do you want from me? YouTube video early in the morning. Um, I'll go back to it because that wasn't, that wasn't sufficient. Um, I got a lot of stories like that where the dots were connected, where the symbolic and the objective world seemed to meet in actual fact where it literally seemed to me like something was communicating to me. And almost routinely, I have never, never gone against that voice, even when I wasn't a Christian. Very few people actually do. When you're thinking about making a big move in your life, I remember the first time I started trying to think that way, it was moving out to California. 
I asked a lot of people. The Bible says there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. So this was prior to me being a Christian. Long prior. I mean, two years, two, three years. But I remember asking a lot of different people, what do you think? Should I move out to California with this girl I met? And, you know, and, and it's like you are canvassing the entire universe. You ask people in different, from different walks of life and different perspectives because you're really trying to actually think something through. And then you try to hear. This is just a normal way of living, guys. You try to hear from yourself what's deep in my heart. Do I really want to move out there? Do I need a change? Is this something good for me? Is this something I should, you know, what, you know, and you start processing things on both an empirical and rational, logical follow-through level, and then way, way deeper than that, on a symbolic and narrative level. That's the point. Atheists tend to disregard the, the symbolic and narrative level as the dumb level, and that's because they are being obtuse on purpose. That's my point. They don't actually do it usually in real life. Why? Because it doesn't serve you well. You think of your real life in narrative ter terms and you ask yourself stories about your life. And you give yourself answers in symbolic and metaphorical terms. That's one way of processing reality. And it's an important way of processing reality. The only difference between the people who do that naturally and the religious person is the religious person says it's the only important way of processing reality and everybody else says it's varying degrees of how important they make it. But everybody's doing it to one degree or another. The only thing I'm telling you is an atheist, pay more attention. Pay more attention when you're actually doing it. Be more honest about when you're actually doing it and really think it through. Am I actually, in a sense, praying? Am I actually, in a sense, you know, hearing from God, from God if God exists? So... I, I guess it wasn't all that good. It wasn't that clear. All right, fine. I'm fine. I tried. I tried. It wasn't my best video, but, you know, they can't all be home runs. They can't all be slam dunks, hit them out of the park. Every once in a while, I got to, you know, got to walk before I can run, right? This is what they say. So, they have it, kids. That is all for now. I'll go back to it. I'll make another video on it, and I'll be more clear and more precise with my language and my thought process. Um, it's something, there's something really deep in there there. Let's put it that way. And there's something worthy of your consideration. I strongly suggest you watch the Jordan Peterson video. Then I strongly suggest you watch the first eight minutes of the Rationality Rules video. After that, it turns into Doyland. It just turns stupid. He starts going into Old Testament. I swear to God, he switches to Old Testament and endorses slavery. Like, what on earth? It's like, the, it's like the inner atheist pops out of him and he just can't help making dumb counter-apologetics arguments even when he's actually starting to make sense. The first eight minutes of it is worth your time. And then it just turns like, what, <laughs> Old Testament, by the way, the Old Testament endorses slavery, so Christianity's got nothing to say on this subject. Like, what the, where did that come from? <laughs> I swear to God, watch it. Eight minutes, switches into the Old Testament slavery, ap apropos of nothing, for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> like, just so, like, oh, boy, I'm an atheist. I gotta make fake arguments about, against God. I forgot. <laughs> I swear to God. But the first eight minutes, he's actually getting somewhere. And that's somewhere that you should actually be you should actually be thinking about if you're an atheist. You should. Because it's somewhere where a lot of people are. And this everybody's deconverting thing is somewhat hooey. A lot of nons out there. Nons are not atheists, guys. They're not. <laughs> They're not. Nons just means they aren't Christian. Doesn't mean they don't think along those lines in ways that atheists are steadfastly refusing to think. That's really the main separating difference. Why there are still relatively few atheists. Because they are steadfastly refusing to engage with the world in symbolic, metaphorical, spiritual terms. On purpose. So, there you have it, kids. That is all for now. Just my opinion. Just my opinion, you know. Just my opinion, dog. I, you know, I apologize for saying it out loud. I had to say it out loud. Just, just had to say it out loud. I apologize. That's all for now, kids. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.